Hi everyone, Justin Gray here from Immersive Mastering. Thank you so much for tuning in. This video is going to be dedicated to explaining and helping us to better understand exactly how immersive audio content is interacting and behaving with the three major streaming platforms, which is uh, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Tidal. Before I get into that, I want to thank everybody who has been subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's a lot more content to come. I've been working day in and day out in Dolby Atmos, uh, specifically on both sort of catalog content for artists and labels, uh, as well as a bunch of new productions. So I've been a little bit slow to get to some of this content, but I have a, I have a list of things that I look forward to continuing to share with the community to just help us uh, expand and our knowledge on this uh, ecosystem and keep pushing the bar higher for immersive audio content. Um, I'd also like to really thank the artists that I've had the chance of working with over the last year. Um, in the video description below, there's three links. One is to a playlist of uh, my work, thus some of my selected works uh, on Apple Music, one on Amazon HD. You do have to have an Amazon HD account to access that, which will be discussed in this video. And then also Tidal HD, same thing there. Uh, so if you want to listen to some content, um, I'm not allowed to play content that, of course, I'm not the master owner of on YouTube, so that would be the way that I would uh, suggest you can check out some music, and most importantly, check out those artists. So, in this video, we're going to go through talking about the streaming services, talking about how the technology is working in each one, and also, you know, there's some great demos out there, really good um, demos, written demos on exactly how we access these files. But I just want to provide a mastering engineer's perspective on what is happening when we press those buttons. And, and hopefully as well, just clarify to make sure that any of you who are listening to the content are indeed listening to and understanding what you're listening to. So first things first, Apple, spatial audio. So I've explained this before. Spatial audio is Apple's own proprietary ecosystem for uh, decoding and delivering immersive audio content. At the moment, that means Dolby Atmos. Uh, it could expand to others. That's uh, yet to be decided. But spatial audio is their world of describing this new frontier of, of immersive audio delivered in their ecosystem. Um, so when a Dolby Atmos master file is delivered to Apple Music, something happens with Apple that is different than Tidal and Amazon. It's very important we understand this. Um, Apple accepts the ADM BWF master file, which myself or other content creators are delivering. And rather than using the exact binaural render, which is our headphone render, which is called an AC4 IMS file, which is delivered to Amazon and delivered to Tidal, we'll discuss that as this video goes on, Apple actually creates their own binaural render. And therefore, the binaural render in Apple Spatial Audio of an Atmos mix is not identical to the original stereo master. Uh, sorry, to the original binaural master, which is a representation of the Atmos master. Um, that has been getting, I would say, you know, different is not always better or worse. I just want to put it out there right now that it is different. And I do think in the early, uh, right when it started, there were some things that needed to get figured out, and I do think that we're seeing a trajectory towards uh, some really meaningful uh, presentation of immersive audio, uh, and excited to see that continue to grow. You know, there has definitely been some hot and cold on Atmos, especially in the Apple ecosystem, and I can understand why. As a mastering engineer, I hear what I made, and then I hear what's being played on Apple, and it is different. Sometimes it's more different than others, uh, depending on a number of technological factors, many of which I've been studying so that I can, you know, sonically average to be able to benefit from what Apple is, how Apple is presenting uh, immersive audio content. So just so that you understand that, uh, so understand that that is a thing that's happening and there's no sign as of now, um, specifically that Apple will adopt the ACA4 IMS, which is exactly Dolby's uh, binaural render, but there's... Uh, I think been a lot of encouraging um, discussion around them integrating more of the binaural, binaural metadata, specifically the binaural render settings to more accurately depict what we have, uh, while potentially also, you know, 
benefiting from some of the creative decisions that they're making. So we'll have to see how that develops. Of course, Apple, only on iOS. Um, it has to be an iOS device. It has to be an Adobe Atmos uh, enabled Apple device. So this also does include a few computers now. Now I want to just talk about headphones because of course, Dolby Atmos, multi-channel audio format that can fold down to our headphone listening experience. The AirPod Pros, the AirPod 3, uh, the AirPod 3s just came out. I use the AirPod Maxes for uh, sonic averaging and checking the uh, exactly how it's going to sound on spatial audio. Uh, I'm going to do a video, by the way, um, explaining that another time. Uh, let's check my channel. There's going to be one specifically about using the MP4 render for spatial audio checking uh, before uploading to uh, you know a final master. Anyways, so with headphones in the Apple world, anybody with any headphone can listen to Atmos content. If you go... And here, let me just switch my screen. If you go into here, and I'll just make sure that it's as clear as possible. The reason I'm filming it and not doing a screen share is I actually want to you know, show you exactly where things are. If you go down to your music settings, here under Dolby Atmos, we have automatic always on or off. Off means, well, realistically, if you're watching this video, you're probably not choosing off. It means that you won't get Atmos content, it won't happen. Automatic is the mode where you benefit from the Apple headphone ecosystem. It's slick. I'll show it to you in a second. Always on means that it will always force the Atmos to headphones or to um, the two-channel speaker playback on the iPhone. And always on is the way that you, with not Apple headphones, you have to select that mode in order to hear Atmos content. Now, if you're playing Atmos content and you come into this while it's playing in the background, you switch between off and always on. You can toggle between the stereo, original stereo master, and the Atmos file, which is the binaural render. Um, when we deliver uh, Atmos content, we have to deliver it to match the stereo length exactly for this reason. This is why, because Apple wants us to be able to smoothly go between them. And I agree, I think it's a pretty slick system. This is a little bit clunky for doing an AB, but realistically, consumers are not really thinking halfway through a song of switching. Um, so I think that that's where they're coming from. Now, so, if, so just to clarify, you have a, a pair of these, like these are the LCD ones by Odyssey. I plug them into my phone. I have to put always on. That's how I'm going to hear the uh, Atmos content. And then if I want to hear stereo, I'm going to have to go to automatic or off. Now, for the AirPods, the AirPod Maxes, the AirPods or the new AirPod 3s, for instance, there's a couple major features that you do get, um, of course, as well as sounding the way that they do. So I'm going to set it to automatic. Although you can also set it to always on for, for AirPods, but automatic is is the way to go. Here, for instance, this is my um, playlist. Playlist of uh, Immersive Mastering Dolby Atmos Masters. Again, that link is, is down there if you want to hear some stuff. Got some, uh, you know, again, pleasure to work with all these artists creating this content. So if I choose this tune, which is the Arkells, I had the pleasure of mixing their record recently. Uh, it's out in the world. Um, uh, blink once, and this is Swing, Swing, Swing. You'll notice here that the file says... Dolby Atmos. That means that the Dolby Atmos file is playing. Now, that's because for this video, I figured it out. I have an AirPod in. That's so, <laughs> so that I can show you these features. When you have an AirPod in and I'm on automatic mode, this is what happens. First of all, it automatically puts it to Atmos. But what I do get, so I'm going to press play. Actually, it's, it's a bit distracting. It's playing in my ear. When I go to the top right and I come here, this is what you get. You hold that down, you hold down the volume toggle, and you get spatial audio on, spatial audio off. That is doing the automatic to always on switch that I was describing. It does it really slickly. While you're listening to the file, you can AB. I do this all the time because I'm interested in going in and hearing how the Atmos is comparing to the stereo because it's my job. But I just want you to understand that these are the features, as well as, of course, like when you're wearing the AirPod, 
it just your phone connects to it automatically. I mean, that's the Apple stuff. But that's essentially the main feature that you would notice um, it, as a, you know, as a benefit if you want to be able to do that quick toggling. The difference between the AirPod 3 and the Pro, really they have the same basic features. Apple's just like, okay, we got a new headphone. Um, I'm curious to hear if they sound better or if the Pro is still a, a better headphone. But I certainly recommend the AirPod Pros as a pretty decent headphone where you can do a whole bunch of also just day-to-day -day work. Anyways, you'll also notice in the AirPod world, you have noise cancellation or noise control. I suggest off. Noise cancellation and transparency mode, they mess with the EQ. They make things, um, they make things a little bit uh, different already. And that's on top of Apple's spatial render. So I just recommend you want to actually listen to things critically, go to off. It's the same as wearing like a Bose noise canceling headphone. Yeah, you cancel sound from outside world, but it also changes some, some fundamental things. The other thing, and this is the big part of, um, this is the big part of, I'd say the, the sort of AirPod thing is, is the head tracking feature. Now I will tell you, I don't, I don't enjoy it at all, personally. Head tracking with music, I, it's as a mastering engineer, when I experience it, I'm like, oh my goodness. Obviously, everyone's entitled to do whatever they want with their listening experience, and you should have fun, and you should try it. But in all reality, it's not, um, it's certainly not the intent. Um, and it's already, we're already spatializing this music. Now the idea that when I move my head, the bass or the drums or the vocals stay here and move around, it, it's maybe fun as an experiment. I could see how video game and I could see how in video content it makes more sense. But in music, eesh. so just so you know where that is, let me find it here. We go to accessibility. Then we find our AirPods. My AirPod Pros are connected. And you'll see here, spatial audio head tracking. You can go video content, audio and video content. I'm off. You can try it, but just be aware that that is not the intent whatsoever of the original engineers to be able to, to spin around. If I want to put something behind you, I put it behind you. If you turn around, you've reversed that. Again, do what you got to do, but just to put it out there. So that's, that's sort of the Apple ecosystem, and it's important to mainly clarify that these are files that play back. They have a little bit of a different EQ curve than what was originally intended, but it's very musical and that's what we're all used to listening to. So as mastering engineer, I'm really focused on making sure that the content works and I'd love comments or whatever feedback on maybe tracks that you like, tracks that you think are working. Um, please do share some ideas. So have, let's see, we've done automatic always on. The download settings, I'll show you this. If by chance, this one got me too. If by chance you find, so I'm going back here, I'm going to music. If by chance you find that your file will not play in Atmos, it might be that it downloaded and you didn't have downloaded in Dolby Atmos connected. It got me for a little while. You just have to click that button. It'll re-download the music with the Atmos. It's, it's a file saving, like a space saving tool. Sound check. So sound check is a normalization feature. Um, in my experience, sound check is not having a drastic effect at all on the Atmos playback, but it is normalizing the stereo down significantly so that if you want to toggle between Atmos and stereo, put sound check on. Otherwise, the stereo is so much louder that it's not really a realistic listening uh, comparison. It's hard to make a, uh, it's hard to make a, an objective opinion when the volume differenti is differentiated that much. And the last thing, this new, this new thing. Um, let me just pick a track here. So if I, if I just go to Apple Music, see what comes up here, find some classical music, and and I choose something not Dolby Atmos. So, you know, some Bach. And I press play. What I think we're about to see is this. 
spatialized stereo. This just happened. I just need to put it out there what that is, just in case anyone is not perfectly clear. That when I press play and spatialized stereo is off, I am listening to the Stereo Master. In fact, in this world, I'm now listening to a lossless at an Apple Digital Master. I'm listening up to a 192 24-bit master file. This is a glorious achievement. The idea of listening to that beautiful master and then turning on spatialized stereo, which is spatializing. It's essentially like, to me, it feels like an MSEQ where we, where we take the highs and we widen them, take the bass, widen it a little bit, get some sort of transient detail and widen it. It's, it's like sort of like putting on ozone imager on like a really aggressive setting. Again, I, I'm not saying to anyone, what you, you do whatever you're going to do as listeners, but it's really important to remember that that is not Atmos. It is not immersive audio, and it is not the intent of the original stereo uh, engineer. If you like it, that's great. If you enjoy listening to the music that you're listening to more because of it, go for it. That's why it's there. But just be aware that that's a pretty, that's a very aggressive um, adjustment to the original content. And that, that was a surprise to me. So anyways, now we've covered it. You're aware of what it is, and you certainly know my current opinion on it. Um, I think seek out the Atmos content and get, get used to music that's put in immersive audio uh, purposefully, but experiment with it. Maybe it's for you. I don't know. Okay, so Amazon HD. Amazon made a massive announcement this week that they are now playing Dolby Atmos content over headphones on both iOS and Android devices. That does make this the most flexible immersive audio streaming service where Tidal is only Android and Apple is only Apple. Amazon is in both. Um, Amazon HD, like Tidal, also handles Sony 360 RA, which is a Sony 360 Reality Audio. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But the most important thing for both Amazon HD and Tidal, but I'm going to focus on Amazon HD because it's both iOS, Apple, and Android-based as a, as a platform, is this here, the AC4 IMS file. Amazon HD plays back the exact binaural render that was created by the production team. As a mastering engineer, as a mix and mastering engineer, I'm working with artists, producers, labels, teams really hard to not only create an immersive experience, but to also make sure that the headphone experience is meaningful and to make sure that the headphone experience is able to capture the essence of that stereo master, that original stereo master. Now that's, that's when we're talking about legacy or uh, catalog content. For new content, the sky's the limit. And I've got some uh, videos coming up where I'm going to be working on some of my own music and an album that's coming out shortly. So do keep in touch uh, and just subscribe and you'll see that stuff come. But as for music where we've really worked on that binaural experience, especially in juxtaposition with the Stereo Master, as I was describing, Apple has their own tuning for the binaural render where Amazon is using Dolby's AC4 IMS file, which is a, a part of the deliverable when I, f that, that is derived from the Atmos Master, the ADM BWF. And so Amazon, over any headphone, is providing accurate, like actual accurate representation of what was intended by the production team. I think that's very important for everyone to understand. Same thing goes for Tidal, by the way. Tidal's been doing that since the beginning um, but Tidal is only on Android, so I know that that plays a major factor. So Amazon HD is right in the middle. Um, let me show that to you briefly, just a second. So here's Amazon HD. I've got a playlist, again, link in the video description. And you'll notice that I know that it's a little, little fuzzy here, but work with me. I, again, I, I just want to video it because otherwise you wouldn't see some of these features. It says Atmos here. 
And and by saying Dolby Atmos, so for instance, here's a band, Valley, uh, that I have worked with on a bunch of their content. Huge fan, lovely work. We're, we're really happy with the Atmos content uh, and would love to share that with you. Here, there's a thing that says Dolby Atmos. When I click that yellow button, I get this screen. I get to toggle in real time between stereo and Dolby Atmos. So that is huge. That is providing for any headphone listener. That's providing the ability to toggle between the two the same to the same um, sort of slickness that the Apple world provides with their only with their AirPods. We get that here. Also, the normalization, which I mean is the balance between Atmos and stereo, has been really well implemented here. It's it's sort of how it should be. So for those of you who really want to get into this, who you're really enjoying Atmos content, I really suggest that you at least experience this as a medium if you're an Apple user. If you're already entitled, you can do this, and I'll explain. I'll show you that. Um, I really do suggest that. And hey, I'm I'm all for Apple. I think I'm I'm you know grateful for the fact that Apple is the they are the ones who have really put spatial on the map, put immersive audio on the map in this new way. Um, they're doing incredible work. They're doing work helping labels and artists to put the content out. They have their visionaries in, in the format. So all I'm talking about here is the fact that as a mastering engineer, the file that me and the artist and the producers and labels, etc., have have really worked very hard to create is being accurately represented here which of course I appreciate. So um, now the other thing with the Amazon world is that you can listen to Sony 360 RA. So sorry, I'm going to go back here. I'll put this in the uh, link below as well. I have a playlist. I've been working in Sony 360 RA. For instance, here's a, a band called Canons lovely band that I recently did uh, an Atmos master for and a Sony 360 reality audio master for. And so here I can toggle the Sony 360 or the stereo, same functionality. And, and Amazon is capable of playing Sony 360 reality audio. Apple is not. Tidal is. So that's a huge advantage. When you start looking through the Sony 360 RA list, there's a huge list of largely Sony artists, Columbia Sony artists, um, who have incredible mixes. And I'm going to do some video content down the road on Sony 360 RA, but it's its own immersive audio ecosystem. It's a headphone dedicated system, and there's a, there's a different vibe to it, and, and there's something really meaningful there to be explored. So... That's Amazon HD, the one, the two things at the bottom here, the Echo Studio. Amazon HD originally, they've actually had Atmos content for a long time, but it was originally only playing over the Echo Studio um, and maybe one of their other speakers, I'm not sure. But that means that, you know, you're listening on this sort of giant pod and you could toggle between stereo and, and Atmos. And largely the Atmos blooms and sounds much bigger and, and you know, a good mix sounds nice on the Echo Studio. Um, and that's being derived, of course, from the DD plus JOC file. The one thing Amazon does not do, which the other two do, so Apple and Tidal, when I'm using an Apple TV 4K plugged into an Atmos receiver via HDMI, sending bitstream of that, of that uh, DD plus JOC file, which is the Atmos file for consumers, I can then stream multi-channel audio from my receiver into my system. I can listen to Apple Atmos content and Tidal Atmos content in 714 as it was intended within reason. But the Apple TV 4K thing does not work with Amazon HD. So let's say you're using you're using it on your Apple TV 4K, you can actually play like stereo content, but you can't play an Atmos file right now, as far as I can tell, uh, you cannot send it over Bitstream. So Tidal was the first. They were the first to hold an Atmos file and present it, except that it's only Android. Uh, unless 
interestingly, you have an Apple TV 4K. So well before Spatial Audio and, um, and Apple, and well before Amazon, who only just recently started even offering to headphone listeners, I've been listening to At Atmos content on Tidal over my Apple TV 4K for a significant amount of time, year and a half, two years, something like that. Um, on Android devices, it behaves very similar to Amazon uh, in the sense that it works for all headphones. They use the AC4 IMS and the uh, MP4 DD plus JOC is what's used to feed the multi-channel experience over an Apple TV. So now in terms of showing you that because I don't have an Android, uh, that's not something that I am adept to do. So. Uh, but that being said, it, it works very similar. I've seen it to how Amazon worked or Apple worked. And if you have an Android, it just works. You just press play on an Atmos and it works. You get that Atmos file. Um, I have provided a Tidal HD, uh, Tidal HD playlist in the video description, uh, which I use when I'm checking stuff on my Apple TV. But for any Android users, you could absolutely use that. So... We've covered these three services, covered a lot of technicalities about them, and hopefully I've just been able to explain what these buttons are doing, what you're actually listening to, how it's interfacing with the original master, uh, and my goal is just to clarify. So please subscribe. There's a lot more content to come on mixing, on aesthetics, on mastering. Um, and if you do have time, please do check out my website, immersivemastering.com. And I would say what I encourage the most is check out one of those um, links below for the playlists. Check out these artists' work. Check out this content in Atmos and let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's been a pleasure to working on it. Finish this video. I'm going right back to Atmos Mastering right now and uh, look forward to keeping in touch. So thanks, everybody.